Hello and welcome to Bite Size Piano. In this video I'm going to be giving you some tips and advice for the sight reading part of the ABRSM piano exam. So for grade one, the hands are going to be played separately and they will remain in the same hand position. You'll also only be reading with crotchet beats per bar, so where there is a four at the bottom of the time signature. And you'll only be asked to read in either two four, three four, or four four. The key signatures will either be no key signature, and it will either have one sharp or one flat, and maybe the odd accidental in there. So how I teach my private students is that I give them a checklist of things that they need to check off in their mind when they're given only 30 seconds to look at a sight reading excerpt of music to prepare. The first thing is to find your hand position. The piece will be numbered with the fingers. So there'll usually just be one finger number in each hand and that's the note that you put whatever finger on. So I'm going to show you an example. So this book is actually um, not an ABRSM book, it's a Faber music book, um, Improve Your Sight Reading Grade 1. This book is very good as opposed to the ABRSM one because it takes you through stages and so practicing reading in different key signatures, different time signatures, there's also some rhythm practice in there as well. So if we look at number one, we can see that it's telling you to put your thumb on F in the right hand and then in your left hand it's telling you to put your fifth finger on F as well and then in the key signature we have a B flat so my right hand thumb is on F and my little finger is on the F below that one and because of the key signature we then need to put any relevant fingers over the correct notes so my second finger will go over B flat and my fourth finger will go over B flat. So now my hands are in the right position and this is a very, very important step and one that I tell my students to do first because if your, hands, if your fingers are over the right notes you're more likely to play the right notes. So after you've found your hand position and then the next step would be the key signature or any sharps and flats, so any accidentals and you've put the right fingers over those notes it's now time to look over the sight reading excerpt. Because we need to use the 30 seconds as wisely as possible, I advise that you look, you scan through and use the rest of the time you have left to play the section of the sight reading that you find the most intimidating to you. For some people it's just it's bass clef. If you feel that you can read the, the treble clef a lot better, save that until you're playing it to the examiner. So use the time to figure things out that you're a little bit more unsure of. So don't always necessarily start playing it from the beginning because that's not going to tackle any areas you might find will be a problem area. Also clap any rhythm or tap any rhythm on your leg. Rhythm is obviously very important and is marked not just on the notes but the rhythm as well. So it's very tempting to be obsessed with trying to play all the, the correct notes. But if you're trying to play all the correct notes and you're going back and forth and you're hesitating a lot, it's going to really disrupt the general flow and feel of a piece of music. I feel it's better to try and get the next beat in on time or the rhythm on time and you're playing sort of the general direction of the notes, whether they be correct or not, than it is to have no rhythm at all, have no sense of time or feel of any pulse and sort of be obsessed with trying to get every single note correct. So in your sight reading practice, try and be strict with yourself or get someone to time you. So only give you 30 seconds. So you're practicing using your time as wisely as possible. 30 seconds goes like that. It goes it's over so quickly. So if I have a checklist of points, you'll go into the exam better prepared you don't know what you're going to get on the day of your exam, but you can at least prepare how you approach it. So just a tip, so the aim for the sight reading is if you imagine that there's someone listening to you playing your sight reading and they don't know anything about music, or they don't know how to read music, and to them it should sound like you haven't gone wrong, if that makes sense. So whether you have gone wrong or not, whether you know you have or you haven't, as long as you keep the piece going, don't look back don't repeat anything, just always look forward, always read on 
and if you think you've got a note wrong, you just have to try and forget it and try and play the next note right. So what's useful for your sight reading is if you're a little unsure of some of the notes, as long as you're very sure of the, your starting hand position, from there you can practice reading in intervals. So figuring out the next note in relation to the last one by how far it is away from the previous note. So here we have an F and then the second note is in the space above the first note. So that means it's a, you're missing out a note and playing the next one up. So whether you can figure out the actual name of that note or not, you can at least figure out the interval of it. And then the next note is the next note up. And then we have a line down to a line, so you're missing out a note again. And then here we have an interval of a fourth. And then we have, again, a space to a space. So you're missing out a note again. And then it's the left hand. Line to a line, missing out a note line to the next note up, so it's the next note higher, space to a space, missing out a note again, then an interval of a fourth. So it's worth looking at the pattern, you know, any pattern you can spot with your sight reading, and try and play the sight reading in that way. Unless you're very confident with all the names of the notes and which fingers are over the notes, your hand's not going to be in the same position every single time. Your hands will be over a different set of notes in every single sight reading practice. So I advise that you really practice your interval reading as well, because I think it's going to be most, more beneficial to you on the day when you're a little bit nervous, there's a lot of pressure. See if you can have a go at playing this one. Now we've talked through it, obviously we've had way more than 30 seconds. Pause the video and see if you can have a go yourself. So remember to count yourself in, take it steady, and try to keep looking forward, don't look back. If you had a go at that, this is how it sounds. One, two, three, four. If you can include dynamics, there will be dynamics, try and include them as best as you can. I think it's easy just to play loud and soft and it will gain you an extra few marks. So I hope that's been useful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I've put some information about the book that I'm using and just to recap everything in the link description below. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.